Buongiorno Juventini, ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you are all doing well. These are the important videos, these are the videos that I love recording. Why? Because we are speaking about the present, understanding the situation that we are in, and speaking about the future, the imminent, the near future of our beloved black and white team. John Elkan, owner, wrote a letter to the Exor shareholders and identified in these letters four big keywords and also important one name that is missing in that letter that i want to add to the four keywords so five keywords a name that reading a bit the reaction to that letter online not a lot of people were able to raise it not a lot of people were able to think about to understand that missing that name has a big impact on Juventus Football Club for the near future. So maximum of like, continue to support the channel. Me as a content creator, it costs you zero, but it's helping me so much. If you are new, put a maximum of like and subscribe to the channel because now we start. Before speaking about John Elkan and Transfer Market and potential names, let's go towards something that made me extremely happy this morning. We are in Champions League moment. We saw four spectacular games where we spoke about it and a lot of people told me, Beppe, we are far from that level. Well, watching what happened yesterday after Atletico Madrid Dortmund, that interview, Del Piero was an interviewer, he was a journalist and he was actually speaking after the game with Terzi, Jogot of Dortmund, beautiful interview, nice. You saw that he was a bit nervous, not Del Piero, the coach of Dortmund. He's leaving, he's coming back, asking, a bit shy, I have to do it. I have to take my chance. Can you please accord me to go with a selfie together? Because you are one, you are my biggest idol. Beautiful words. And you see how happy he is. Terzic. Well, I hope Terzic will do fantastically well with Dortmund. Qualifying to the next Champions League. Maybe already beating Atletico Madrid. Full power, go Dortmund. But why am I happy? Because a lot of people that watch only that last year's of Del Piero. The young people, you missed something incredible. Juventus was fantastic in Champions League. Juventus brought me so much joy in Champions League. Del Piero, icon, not only of Juve, but football. Champions League campaign. Guys, guys, that level that you saw yesterday, the day before, Juventus was able to do it. And that's why the letter of John Elkan is that important, because we don't have to accept mediocrity. We have to acknowledge, to understand that we are a difficult moment. Yes, of course. But then we need to aim again to be a big team for a comeback. And now we go to the letter of John Elkan. He wrote a letter, a big letter with a lot of different topics. But there is a part with four keywords identified by me that are super important about Juventus. I will read because the words are important, the first paragraph with that first keyword. Maurizio Scannavino has also had his hands full with Juventus, where 2023 represented a year of transition. Under its newly appointed board, chaired by Gianluca Ferrero, the president, the focus has been on resolving the issues it was facing with sporting justice, both in Italy and Europe. While reiterating the correctness of its actions, Juventus effectively addressed the issue and started planning for the future without the backdrop of tension and instability that had characterized prior seasons. That's the first topic. The key word here is transition. A year of transition. It's telling us what I'm repeating you since now a lot of time. The priority. It hurts for the supporters, but the priority of that 2023 was not on the field, unfortunately, but off the field. He's repeating that, unfortunately, it was not because of us. We repeat that we were correct in our way of doing, but unfortunately, we need to take a decision, a big one, to go faster, because we needed to solve the Italian issue and European issues. We could have a lot of problems in Italy. We could have had a lot of bans, more than just one year in Europe, and we needed to turn the page, accepting a plea deal. But we repeat, and every single time they are repeating, correctness of actions of Juventus, which means we were obliged. Because we don't want just to give up, to continue an endless fight that we know that we will lose at the end, 
and losing or maybe even win at the end but it will be too late because the damage would have been too big because we want to go towards a comeback so that first one is the past we turn the page transitional year and now we go towards present and future to understand it because that second paragraph we already have a second keyword on the back of these developments juventus began its turnaround not its start it began already to turn around appointing a new sporting director and launched a capital increase of 200 million that was successfully completed the 23 24 season is therefore year zero to juventus in which the company is putting in place the foundations for its comeback both on and off the field identify the keyword after transition this one is comeback the comeback this one was year zero you know it 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 was not nice to hear but juventus every time that management was speaking they always spoke about qualifying about champions league as minimal objective then miracles can happen beautiful moments can happen of course but the first priority was qualifying because it is vital because it's crucial to start really these foundations for a comeback on juventus on and off the field when we spoke about that first topic, they spoke about Maurizio Scannavino, they spoke about Gianluca Ferrero, where their priority was, unfortunately, because they couldn't, the field. But now, in that second paragraph, they already start speaking about the sporting side, appointing a new sporting director. Because now we are thinking already, we are putting the foundations to win again on and off the field. And that's where we go towards that third long paragraph where we have two keywords. The first one is Cristiano Giuntoli, he just spoke about it. Cristiano Giuntoli, who joined in 2023 and has just been named Best Sporting Director of the Year at Globe Soccer Awards for his work at Napoli last year, will help to shape the Juventus of the future. The team aims to return in Champions League and has already confirmed his presence to the FIFA World Cup in the summer 2025. Wait, and then we will continue. Cristiano Giuntoli is the third keyword here. He's reiterating that we went on the market to take the best in class, the best available on the market. It was or him or nobody because we wanted to wait for him. Luckily, we were able to free him a year before the end of his contract. And he is the guy that will help to shape Juventus' future. Why is it important? Because recently we hear... Conte is speaking with Calvo, Motta is speaking with Giuntola, Giuntoli, there is Max Allegri that is omnipresent and is the one that is deciding everything, the Mercato, the future, his, few, his own, f no, no, no. Here it's black on white written that John Elkan, he has chosen Cristiano Giuntoli and it is Cristiano Giuntoli that decides. So the future coach, the future players, whoever will be decided by Cristiano Giuntoli. It can be Motta, it can be Conte, it can be Zidane, it can be Max Allegri, but Cristiano Giuntoli receives the trust black on white from John Elkan. Super important. Why? Because he was identified as the best that can help Juventus. Will he succeed or not? That's a mystery. But at least we have an, an answer, a name on who is taking care and responsibility on the field. Fourth paragraph, fourth keyword, with an increased focus on young talents from the next-gen team who already proved his value last year, Juventus aims to build a sustainable cost structure in line with the new regulations of, from UEFA, which require clubs to increasingly reduce players' wages and amortizations as a percentage of operating revenues. Why is that important? What is the key word there? Sustainability. It's not a new word for people that are following the channel, for people that are listening to these kinds of video, for the future of Juventus, sustainability. Not because we want to, but because we are obliged to, because of ourselves, because the financial situation that we are in. And here is speaking about changes at Juventus Foundation. Next year will be the first real year, year one of Cristiano Giuntoli, of that new Juventus. There will be a lot of changes, not like last season where Giuntoli could do nothing. When I see people criticizing Giuntoli because he signed Wea, Wea was signed before Giuntoli. When I see that only in the winter he signed Alcaraz and Thiago Giallo, and that's it, wait. Now the work of Giuntoli will start. Now it will be a crucial decisive moment for Giuntoli. But for people that are expecting 
the crazy mercato in terms of big names, big salaries, big players, going immediately with the players that can compete immediately in terms of names on the field, in terms of signings with the Real Madrid, with the Manchester City, calma, calma, calma. We will continue to promote next-gen players. The first name I'm thinking about is, for example, Luis Haza. It's maybe an Adzic that will start with the next gen and maybe towards the middle of the season playing some game with the first team. Maybe a Turicchia, maybe a Comenencia. Not 100 players, but a few names because we continue, like he said, to invest in these players. Why? Sustainability. These players are your own players. These players cost you zero. They have an extremely low salary. And we need to continue for what reason as well. Because the UEFA rules are changing. They were already changing progressively. And we are going towards a new FIFA Fair Play where you can only spend in players' value, in players' salary, a certain percentage of your revenues. If I'm not wrong, it's 70% of your revenue that can be on players. That means that more you earn in revenue, more you're able to spend. At the moment, Juventus is not doing that bad in terms of revenue, especially in Italy, but they need to expand. They need to become bigger. And that's why financials are important, why it is important to go with the green books instead of red books, because we need to have increased revenue for better players, more expensive players, if you want to. If you see that we are going with extensions, reducing costs, for example, if you see these names that, mm, you're not sure, a la Felipe Anderson, that cost you zero, for example, with that not of a, it's not a zero player with a salary of 10 million euro, it's a zero player with a salary of 3.5, 4 million euro. You see that that's the strategy also to become auto-sustainable. That means yourself doing without debts, without asking extra money, which already happened, to go on the market, to sell players, to have new players, and to try to have even profit with that. That's the strategy for the next season. So don't expect crazy names immediately. Expect a event that will do a lot. Sometimes we also probably, certainly will do one, two big names of sacrificing, but for building a better Juventus on the long term. And now we go towards the fifth word that is missing. Thank you for waiting until now that I told you a fifth keyword that is Massimiliano Allegri. He is not in the letter. He is not. He will tell me, Beppe, but why speaking about the coach in a letter like that for the shareholder of Exor? Well, every time that publicly John Elkan wrote something or spoke to the public, he always mentioned the trust in Max Allegri, the hope of continuing to win also on a long term with the coach, because he was trusting. Here, he didn't mention the coach. He didn't mention Max Allegri in that entire letter. Not to thank him for what he did. Not to reiterate his trust. He spoke about Cristiano Giuntoli. And that's the key name in that big letter. Cristiano Giuntoli. Not the coach. What does that mean? In these letters, they don't forget people. That's just what I want to say. So for people that are a bit smart, you understand what it is, that fifth keyword, Max Allegri. Tutto Sport is going with Elora di Giuntoli, because it's true. It is now the moment of Giuntoli, the hour of Giuntoli. Arrived on the 7th of July, we know it. He couldn't act as he wanted, now it is. We heard a lot of names linked to Juve. Some people will be happy with some names, some people will not. Like Felipe Anderson, discussion, debate, Zaccagni. But on top of these names, I start to see also bigger names. Alasirgse, you like or you don't like, but at least it's a big name with a value around 50 million euro, 55 million euro. Copenhagen is still there on that list. It's not disappearing. A value also there, 55, 60 million euro. Turam, also there, a value of 40, 50 million euro. And then Boniface. A player that was bought from Leverkusen for 20 million euro last season that has already a value that is double, 40 million euro. Why am I telling you all these names? They will not all join Juventus. Forget about it. These will not be one, two, three, four. They all come to Juve. We have a midfield of, I don't know, uh, Koopman, Sturam and Locatelli. Or Rap no, no. But you're already aiming for a player like that, which is already a new vision made with other players that are costing you less, with next-gen players that are increasing the presence in the first team. 
We also want to keep our best players. A player like Federico Chiesa. That more we go, more the rumors are saying Federico Chiesa is likely to extend his contract until 2026 or maybe even more, we don't know. Positive signs. Because Federico Chiesa, we want him to be also there. A phase of that new Juventus year one. Together with Yildiz, together with Vlahovic. These players are fundamental for a strong Juventus. That mean that we keep all the players? No, there will be some sacrifices. Uh, Bremer, for example, Manchester United, will try to make an offer already this summer. Not with the close, because the, ac the close is active from next year. But probably a 70 million, 80 million euro offer to Juventus. That probably will even accept with Calafiori being one of the players. And maybe another name in defense to fulfill a four-man defense which Juventus is thinking about. Another player that can leave, I told you, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. I see probably six, five, six new faces at Juventus. And when I told you three players of midfield, I said two, potentially three midfielders. A revolution in that sector that we all know it's extremely important, it's crucial to have. When I'm telling you two or three, it depends on one name. Adrien Rabiot. If Rabiot stays, we go for two. If Rabiot leaves, we go for three. Can Rabiot leave? Yes, he can. According to Romeo Agresti, the signs are going towards indication that Adrien Rabiot could look to leave Juventus at the end of the summer. Is it a disaster? I'm, I'm sad about the man, about his attachment to, uh, to the club, about what he can bring on the field. But on the other side, I understand it. We are saving with Alexandre 6.5 million euro. Probably if Rabiot doesn't extend will or not accept an offer that is a bit lower than what he's earning today well we'll also save there 7 7.5 million euro i'm always speaking net these two are going towards the strategy of john elka what he explained sustainability reducing players wages saving costs and then going for other players and that's where the possibility of having one big name in the midfield can start guys I think this video is important. We will come back on it in all 24, 25. Already in the summer, when we will sign a player, we will come back on that letter because of the responsibility of Juntoli. We will come back on the letter of some extensions because of the sustainability. We will come back on that third keyword. No, on that second keyword that was extremely important. It was the comeback on Juventus because we will check what we are able to do also on the field, probably with a new coach, we will not come back anymore on the year of transition because there we turn the page, as said by John Elkan, we fix them. Now we are putting the foundation to come back and hopefully we can do it all together because that's an important thing that he said at the end. All of us united by our love for Juventus. In Italy, in the world, Juventini all together. Grazie, forza. Juve.